G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Saturday afternoon here in Australia. Haven't really had too much of a pullback at the moment, so I guess we're just waiting to see, are we going to have that typical weekend retracement or is it just going to simply pass and we're going to pump right through? Look, gas prices are coming down, thank goodness. Uh, they were up at 100, uh, they went to 50, now they're down to 27, so that's good. Uh, BTC, it's nearly sitting around that 65% dominance. So, you know, is Bitcoin done with its move uh, or is it just gearing up for another move? But look at the moment, uh, some of the altcoins are doing extremely well. Uh, market cap, you know, 660 billion. We need to remember Bitcoin is at its all time high at the moment, but we're only at 666 billion. This was 880, nearly 900 billion dollars at the peak of 2017. So the market cap is less, but the price is way more. So, you know, to think that we're at the peak yet, or it's not going to absolutely explode, in my personal opinion, uh, it's, it's crazy. At the moment, you know, you can check on Google, not too many people are really searching Bitcoin. It's not out there in the mainstream news too much. It's not that you can't find it if you do a Google search. You obviously can, the information's there, but people aren't really seeking it out at the moment. It's just the big institutional players uh, and the really early adopters. And again, even the early adopters in the in the grand scheme of things in institutions, like again, you know, your local uh, sort of, you know, marketplace isn't really rushing out and buying Bitcoin at the moment. Your local, um, you know, retail kind of shops, they're not really investing in Bitcoin at the moment. So business, it's only the really, really big business that's getting into it. And again, those who will be considered the early adopters, the big run is yet to come. Yet to come. And look, there's a story uh, that kind of, uh, I think, helped backs that up anyway. We'll come back to this in a moment, and it's here. So on-chain data suggests more institutions are buying Bitcoin over the counter. So they're doing it all off the, the sort of books at the moment is the way that you can say the Bitcoin price is generally driven by the exchanges, the amount of Bitcoin being bought off the exchanges. So everything, you know, that these big marketplace, not everything, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of what the big institutions are buying at the moment, it's all over the counter. So that doesn't affect the price. But at some stage, all that Bitcoin is going to dry up. And then the next lot of institutional buyers uh, and the retail buyers, they're going to be trying to buy off the exchanges at unbelievable prices because once the OTC stuff is gone, then they have nowhere else to go but the exchanges. And that's when the price really starts to rocket up and, you know, we'll go to some price that none of us can probably really comprehend comprehend you know a lot of people saying sort of a hundred two hundred thousand now we've got people coming out and saying four hundred thousand it's just really hard to know but this uh will stop at some stage there'll be people who just don't want to sell over the counter i mean the miners they're always sort of happy to sell and they sell over the counter but the exchanges uh they will that'll be the only place to sort of go after a while and that's when we're really going to see these crazy price moves because it doesn't surprise me that they're doing it off over the counter but look a lot of the institutional buyers as well they go through grayscale and then you know micro strategy went through coinbase and things like that so it is a mixture of you know sort of both but i think the over the counter stuff outside of just the miners uh, that will all stop whoever is selling their bitcoin at the moment is probably you know they're happy to sell some of it just not happy to sell all of it. And they're going to get to a point where, all right, I'm not selling anymore uh, at 20,000. I'm waiting for, you know, 50,000. Then they'll sell a bit more. And then they'll be like, all right, no, now I'm waiting for 100,000 and so on and so on. So I do think the price of these things, uh, there's going to come a point, you know, we just don't know when it is, when no one's happy to sell Bitcoin anymore at 20,000. Again, then it's going to have to push up to 50,000 before people are really happy to sell. Other than the miners who are always selling, but even they start to hold it back. You know, they've got their ratio, all right, the electricity and everything cost me this much, so I need to sell this much Bitcoin to stay liquid. But if the price just keeps pushing up and pushing up, then they're just going to hold on to Bitcoin. They're not going to have to sell as much. They will be happy to wait for higher prices. And that's when the price is really going to start to move. All right, we go back here. All right, we can see that there are some sort of losses over the last hour, so maybe this is the start of the traditional weekend pullback. We don't know. 
the 24 hours here, all right, look, you know, 0.4%, so half a percent really for Bitcoin, uh, it's still well up over seven days. So, you know, for me, I am expecting a pullback sometime soon, but I just don't know if it's going to happen yet. It might take to 35, 40, 50,000 before it happens, but I don't think it's going to take us too long to get there if we don't have a correction and a reasonable correction sort of soon. Now, that's just my personal opinion. All right, what about uh, big gainers? 24 hours, who's really doing well? So never even heard of this. Uh, banana, maybe this is what, uh, oh God, Mark Cuban was talking about. He said he wasn't investing in Bitcoin anymore. He was investing in banana. Maybe this is what he was talking about and he has made the right call. Up 86% in 24 hours and 176% in seven days. It wouldn't surprise me if this was what he was talking about. People were like, banana, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you be investing in banana? Well, maybe this is what he was talking about. Uh, and, you know, he's probably done extremely well if that's the case. I've never heard of uh, Chimpin, Chimpon, I don't even know how to say that. Chimpion, Chimpion, I guess, uh, coin, but it is now in the top 100 and had a crazy run. Look, same with the graph. Never heard of that. This is all these new coins. Uh, and I'd be very, very careful, you know, pump and dump sort of stuff. You know, it, it's hard to know. I don't know enough about them. But NEM doing well, Synthetics Network doing well, Algorand doing well, Theta. So some coins have done really, really well. Double digit kind of moves. So again, I said this in the video the other day. It generally starts with Bitcoin. Bitcoin will front run it. It'll have a big move. Then it'll cool off and slow down. The large cap altcoins will move. So things like Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and you know the top kind of 10... Uh, coins, maybe even sort of 15 to 20 coins all start to move. Then your mid caps, those, you know, in around kind of the 50 to maybe sort of 100 mark. Uh, then your low caps, so outside the top 100 and 200 and all the rest of that, they start to pump. So that's the cycle. So at the moment, the money has moved out of Bitcoin. It's going into the all the, all the altcoins. Then the profits are going to be taken from that and then it'll move back to Bitcoin unless just a big healthy correction comes, which is something we need to consider. What about losses? What's the biggest losses in the top 100? Almost nothing. XRP's pulled back. Uh, you know, everything will pull back eventually when it's had the pumps that it has. We've got to remember XRP was, you know, way down at 20 cents, 22, 25 cents for a long time, then really struggling with 30 cents and then went all the way to 92 cents. So, uh, you know, a pullback is not, you know, not to be unexpected. But again, this was at 45 cents. Uh, only you know, not that long ago, and I'm kicking myself I didn't buy some more, I was going to, and I thought, no, it'll probably go down to 30 something cents. Uh, didn't happen. But again, you know, these losses are sort of nothing, like Litecoin, 1.7%, but it's up nearly 50% over the last week. Uh, and I'm glad I got my Litecoin. I really questioned myself a couple of times on whether it was the right play, but you know, I just had to hold. And that'll probably be the case with a lot of cryptocurrencies. You may just have to hold for their time to really shine. And look, anything that's a, at least a semi-decent coin in the top 100 is bound to pump uh, You know, at some stage through this cycle. It's just about when it's going to happen and whether you take profits and all the rest of it. And again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. And based on what I've seen in the previous uh, cycles and things like that. All right, I found some interesting stories. So the Treasury has finally come out uh, and given their ruling about, you know, how it's going to work with uh, self-hosted uh, crypto wallets. So the Treasury has released its long-awaited proposal to restrict money service businesses, including US registered crypto exchanges, from dealing with self-hosted wallets. In a Friday evening announcement, the Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, announced proposed rules require, requiring registered crypto exchanges to verify the identity, identity of their customers. If a counterparty uses an unhosted or otherwise uh, covered wallet and the transaction is greater than 3,000, under 3,000, they're not too worried. But, you know, again, the big kind of stuff 
uh, they are going to worry. And look, I'm sure that's three thousand dollars, you know, per year or something like that, or you know, every quarter, whatever it is. Uh, it's not going to be you know three thousand dollars per day because all they do is come back uh, every twenty four hours and do three thousand dollars. You do that by three hundred and sixty five days a year, uh, you can move some large amounts of money. I'm sure uh, it'll be a some kind of regulation behind that. So the rule is currently just a proposal. The Treasury has given stakeholders 15 days to respond with comments. Look, there's already people that are kind of uh, opposed to it, but we go to another story here. So analysts say Mnuchin's proposed self-custody rule won't impact Bitcoin price. And look, so far it sort of hasn't, but it's just came out only a few hours ago. We're really going to have to wait and see. But could it be the trigger for the you know traditional 30-40% pullback? I guess time will tell, we'll know very, very shortly. So analyst debates whether the US Treasury Secretary's new rule about self-custody wallets could place the current bull run in peril. Look, I don't think it will because most people involved in cryptocurrencies are above board. Uh, You know, there's more people doing dodgy stuff with fiat than there is cryptocurrency. That's a common sort of urban myth that all the crooks are using cryptocurrencies, no. Most of the crooks are using cash, and now cash is you know, gonna slowly find its way out, and for those reasons, this uh, won't stop the bull run at all, because again, most you know, people and businesses are doing sort of the right thing. You know, the people who do the worst with this kind of stuff is the really big businesses, so this will keep them honest. They will have to you know, identify who their wallets are, you know what I mean? We'll be able to see the transactions and where the money's moving from then, hopefully anyway. You know, we'll have to wait and see whether the watchdogs really, you know, are all bark and no bite. But I think this is kind of a good thing uh, in the long run. And I don't think it'll affect the price either. Uh, I would completely agree with this. Look, could we have a small correction from it? And again, maybe even the 30-40% correction? Yes, but ultimately it'll start to push its way up. Because that'll just be the bad players really getting out. uh, And the people who have weak hands and have FOMO'd in uh, and now FOMO out at a loss uh, long term. It won't affect the price, in my personal opinion. All right, so here we go. U.S. Senator-elect rallies or rails, I'm sure this was meant to be rallies, against potential crypto wallet ruling. Rumoured upcoming crypto wallet regulation gains further opposition, this time from Cynthia Loomis, a recently elected Wyoming senator. So again, this is only a proposal at the moment. It's not in, and I do think that uh, it will find some fierce... uh, objections Uh, and look I'm not saying the ruling will completely go away but maybe it gets slightly modified a little bit but then again look maybe it comes out even harder who knows you know time will tell but I don't think it will affect crypto too much so here as per recent rumors United States Secretary of the Treasury Steve Mnuchin could drop a stringent piece of crypto related legislation before his expected exit at 2020's end the ruling could potentially severely limit or ban self-custody digital asset wallets, a key component of the entire industry. So things like ledgers and uh, trezors and things like that, I, I don't think they're going to ban them. I think you're just going to have to identify who you are. Uh, and outside of that, again, who cares? I'm, I'm not worried about people knowing that uh, you know I have money and where my money is being spent because I don't have anything to hide. It would be a completely different story for the bad, you know, the shady people. They don't want that happening. But look, we don't really care about them, do we? We want those bad eggs and bad apples out of the game anyway. So, yeah, it's good to know other people are getting behind this. Uh, that, you know, we don't, and as Brian Brooks said, you know, we don't need 50 different rules for cryptocurrencies. It's too many, but we don't need just two. We need to find that right balance where we've got just enough to make it safe and we can identify who people are and things like that, but not so many that it just completely stifles the industry uh, and, you know, ruins any innovation. And we basically just stay the same. We have a system that is no different to the one that we currently are stuck with that obviously doesn't work. It's been, you know, the value of the dollar and the whole system is corrupt and has been going down for a long time. It is time to usher in a new system uh, and a new way that doesn't penalise the little guy and, you know, just completely reward the big guy. Is cryptocurrency the thing that can do that? That's the, that's the dream that we all have. That is what we're all hoping. Uh, but again, you know, the big guys aren't going to want to give up their position too easy and they have a lot of pull, uh, you know, with governments and lawmakers and all the rest of it. You know, hopefully 
uh, governments are even sort of sick and tired of you know these big wealthy you know conglomerates and that having so much power and really just making it very hard for the little guy to ever succeed we we need a free market that they talk about but a safe free market and one where the little guy can make it uh, and isn't just constantly you know kept down to stay in a nine to five for the rest of his life and yeah basically work his entire life and uh, not have anything else and I I completely understand that I, I am in that space right now I work you know it's not a Monday to Friday nine to five but I work a lot of hours uh, and it just feels like it's really really hard to get ahead and I feel like crypto is going to be the thing that breaks me free of those kind of chains I'd love to be able to sort of work for myself and not have to lock myself into X amount of hours and all the rest of it whether that happens for me or not Time will tell. I'm really hoping it does. And look, for anyone who's watching this and in the cryptocurrency space right now, I truly hope that happens for you. Even if it doesn't happen for me, I really want it to happen more for others because I know they will then pass that on. The majority of people want the better for mankind, not just simply themselves. Don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with wanting something for yourself and wanting your life to be better and the life of your family and friends to be better, but that's what it is you know it's not just ourselves there are those you know few individuals who only care about themselves but most of us want it to be better for everyone and particularly you know at least family and friends but then that just keeps reaching out our family and friends are suddenly doing better they want the same for their family and friends and that's how it grows uh, and that's my ideal kind of dream anyways that crypto is one of those things that does just makes the system better for all of us uh Again, not just simply rewarding the filthy rich and completely crippling you know, those who don't have a lot. We need a system where people can work their way out of it. And again, you know, I'm harping on a bit here, but it's not that we don't have a system that completely stops that from ever happening. But gee, it's hard. You know, I just, again, I don't know too many people and I've known a lot of people that have become mega rich. It's it's an anomaly. It's not that I don't know people who've done a right for themselves. I know plenty of people that have done a right for themselves, but that's it. They've just done a right for themselves, but they're st still stuck in a nine to five. They're still going to probably have to work till they're about 60 or 70. Uh, you, you know, that's the laws here in Australia to access your super, excuse me, and all the rest of it. Who wants to work to that? I'd like to be able to retire tomorrow. Uh, and we need something that will help us sort of obtain those goals. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to work. We can't just simply not work. But, you know, the thought of having to work to your 65, 70 uh, before you can retire and have some money and then basically spend a few years uh, of your life. Uh, and it's the later stages of your life where, you know, you might be able to go and see the world and do some stuff. I just think that is a system that I don't really like. But anyway, I've got off. <laughs> I've gone off uh, on, on a tangent here. All right. So here's a one, uh, an interesting one. So again, a lot of money is coming out of those, uh, you know, Bitcoin and going into the large caps and now the mid caps and the small caps that's going to happen as well. All right, so Ripple and MoneyGram pushing boundaries. Uh, in an interview, Holmes said that the idea behind the 18-month-old partnership with Ripple was to push innovation and see how MoneyGram could help in, the pioneering, in pioneering the expansion and global utilization of blockchain. That is completely false. <laughs> that is not why MoneyGram got in. They got in because Ripple bought such a massive part. Uh, well, it wasn't that massive, but it was enough anyway, part of their business because they were struggling. MoneyGram doesn't work. It's the old SWIFT system. And Ripple said, we will buy into your company if you use our product. They did not have any cares about the expansion and globalization uh, of blockchain. They were very anti that. They were happy with the SWIFT uh, sort of system. So they were kind of forced into it, but now they are reaping the benefits. So according to him, the ability to send money across borders is affected by the company's ability to settle remittances in real time, i.e. the SWIFT system. You can't do it. It doesn't work. It's... Uh, it's a bottleneck. It just holds everything up for days and weeks before your money can settle. And their customers are looking for real-time payouts, which brings Ripple into the picture. Now, again, Ripple had to buy into the company and kind of force their hand, but it may be one of the best things that's ever going to happen for MoneyGram. It could be what saves them because all those old antiquated systems, they are dying. They're about to become something of the past. The SWIFT system is done. Uh, it just doesn't work. 
this is the future now whether it's ripple or you know bitcoin or litecoin or whatever stellar lumens who knows but the swift system is dead i think ripple's going to be around i think it's going to do really really well i think a number of cryptocurrencies are going to do really really well it's not just bitcoin they all have a place uh and you know can find their own niche and you know international settlements i think ripple will do that very well and i think stellar will be in there uh and yeah i think there's a number of cryptocurrencies that are going to be around and do very very well now there's always going to be you know the industry leaders uh, i don't think anything's going to take out bitcoin's place of the you know store of wealth i don't think anything's going to take out uh, ethereum's place as the new kind of uh web 3.0 i think cardano is going to be uh giving it a good run for its money and look could take it out who knows but either way uh, you know, I think Ethereum's just got too much going for it at the moment. You know, things like Polkadot, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Atom, so Cosmos and that, they could all stu- still do really well. Not as good as, you know, whatever the leader is, but it's like computers. Yeah, everyone buys, not everyone, but a lot of people buy Apple computers, but people buy Dell and, you know, other things. It's not like Dell's worth no money at all. And if you're getting into these things very early, you can do really well for yourselves in the future. But, you know, that's that's not guaranteed. We'll have to wait and see. Now, we noted Ripple is doing a lot of unique things with blockchain and crypto to help drive the possibility of real-time cross-border settlements. Uh, absolutely, they are. They have a ton of partnerships out there. And, you know, with these new rules coming in, and they're due in the next few weeks, it could be really, really good for Ripple. It could be really, really bad as well. You know, we don't know yet. But if it's really good news, I think, you know, the chances that Ripple isn't adopted and isn't used for this kind of stuff uh, is so slim. I just, I don't know what else is out there that could Ripple give Ripple a run for its money. And don't get me wrong, people say it's centralized, this and that. Look, almost everything's centralized. Somewhere along the way, there's, you know, some lucky individuals or big businesses or whatever that own most of it. Bitcoin, no different. There's whales out there. There's now companies out there that own, you know, massive parts. You know, the, and I'm not trying to throw shade on Bitcoin because I really like Bitcoin, but, you know, there's uh, mining conglomerates that, you know, take up, you know, mass percentages uh, of the Bitcoin network. So even it's somewhat centralized. Uh, Ripple uh, is not as centralized as what, you know, many people like to make out. They hold about, you know, just under half of all the Ripple out there, of all the XRP out there. But look, that's less than half. And again, that'll become less and less and less over time as well. So, you know, try not to get caught up in that uh, kind of, you know, negative narrative, uh, in my opinion. I I think it has a place and I think it does really well. Uh, I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. We'll wait and see. Now again, big business, they're coming. And this, you know, well, they've been coming for a while, but they're still coming. And this is another perfect example. So the U.S. multinational financial service uh, corporation, American Express, one of the biggest, you know, money businesses out there, has invested in the cryptocurrency trading venue Falcon X through its venture arm. Thus, AMX has doubled down on its digital asset endeavors after piloting a blockchain-based rewards program. So if there's anyone out there telling you, oh, crypto is, you know, bullshit and rah-rah and it's going to go to zero, it is not. It is a thing. And that is why big businesses are not only buying up crypto, they are investing in businesses that, uh, you know, use crypto. So exchanges and payment networks and all the rest of it. It is the future. This is it happening right now. It's basically got to that kind of point where, I don't know if you'll have heard this saying, but it's too big to fail. That is where cryptocurrency is now. Now, that does not mean every cryptocurrency is going to last and be around forever. Most of them won't make it. But crypto itself, i.e. the blockchain, it is now too big to fail. It is the future. It is where so much traffic is going to be done through cryptocurrency because it's immutable and because it's public. Everyone can see it. You know, there is going to be private stuff. Yes, absolutely. Don't get me wrong. But most of it will be done on a public blockchain where everyone can see what is going on. And if there's any shady business, it can be found and all the rest of it. And it just helps businesses. You know, if you're some kind of business that, uh, you know, has uh, 
business dealings with other businesses, particularly, uh, you know, moving stuff around the globes and things like that, you want to be able to see how things are working from their end. And you can see that on the blockchain. You can see you've paid for something and it's been shipped out and where it is, a little bit like post-tracking, but that's a very simple way of putting it. But you can see all that kind of stuff. You can see where the products have come from that made the thing that you bought. Know that you're getting the real thing and all the rest of it. There's, you know, that's one very small example of how, you know, blockchain technology is going to work. Uh, and that, is, again, is just a small part. Smart contracts. There's so much out there. NFTs, you know, the whole financial system. There is a world of new things that are going to come to blockchain and cryptocurrencies, in my personal opinion. Now, the US-based cryptocurrency exchange announced the investment from American Express Ventures in a press release yesterday. Although it failed to specify the precise amount uh, AMX has allocated in the platform, the statement reads that it comes as an addition to the 17 million raised in May 2020 from companies like Coinbase Ventures, Fenbushi Capital, and Flybridge Capital Partners. So these are all big multi-conglomerate you know, companies that are all getting on board. Falcon X connects its institutional clients with the ever-growing cryptocurrency market through a single platform for trading, clearing, and even credit. The announcement highlighted the growing adoption rate from institutions while asserting that most trading uh, venues are not prepared to face such a substantial demand. Thus, Falcon X has decided to build a connecting tissue to provide institutional clients with value-traded solutions and superior customer service through a single fully integrated platform. The company also outlined a 350% revenue growth since the Series C funding in May this year, its client base has grown to 250 institutional customers, which is another 150% increase. It is all happening. And again, you know, usually big business, they get in long before anyone else knows. It's a different world these days where everything's kind of public, but if you aren't looking for this information, you wouldn't know. It's not like you go to your next door neighbor who knows nothing about crypto and go, did you know uh, AMX is investing heavily uh, in cryptocurrency platforms and that? That'd be like, no, I didn't know that. And they probably wouldn't believe you anyway. They'd be like, that funny money stuff, that computer fake money. No, they're not. They just, they wouldn't believe you, most of them. But it is right here. It is happening. You are early life-changing wealth you know will come for those who've invested correctly and understand you know when to get in and when to get out and all the rest of it uh, i'm really 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 excited for 2021 but even beyond yes there's going to be another bear market it's coming what can you do ride through it if you're smart and understand and you know you didn't invest right at the last part but if you did you invest right at the end of the bear market you may have to just simply hold for a couple of years, but eventually it will go up again, short of there being some, again, bug in the system that just no one's ever found over the last 12 years. My personal opinion is if there is a bug in it, it just can't be broken. It can't be found, whatever it is. We would have found it after 12 years. Uh, I'm quite confident uh, in blockchain technology and particularly like Bitcoin. Uh, and you know, hopefully Ethereum 2.0 is the same and all the other ones that are based off that. All right, massive gains. And this is going back to before. Bitcoin had its pump and now the money is moving out of Bitcoin. Some of the profits have been taken. It was at 24,000. It's dropped down to kind of 23,000, 22,000 ish in the high 22s. And now that money's been put into the large alt caps. And then that's moving into the mid uh, alt caps and then the low alt caps. Excuse me. So massive Bitcoin gains are being dwarfed by Ripple, X, Ripple's XRP, Litecoin, Ethereum, and these, they're not minor cryptocurrencies. They're just, they're, again, they're called altcoins. It's almost hard to think of Ethereum as an altcoin these days. Uh, and XRP, again, it's been third for a long time. Litecoin has been at number two, it's found its way down out of the 10, and now it's back in the 10. I think Litecoin's here to stay on. I'm so glad I got a bag and that I didn't sort of panic so when it wasn't doing so well. I think its fate was sealed when it got regulated uh, along with, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, and Bitcoin Cash and I think Ethereum Classic as well. I think 
that kind of sealed its fate that it will last uh, the, the test of time or at least you know in the sort of short to mid term the really really long term I guess we'll have to wait and see back to the story though Bitcoin has broken fresh ground this week, climbing above 20,000 per Bitcoin for the first time ever and grabbing global attention again, three years after Bitcoin's 2017 boom and subsequent bust. The Bitcoin price is up around 30% over the last month, adding to gains of more than 200% since January and pushing the other top five cryptocurrencies by value, Ethereum, XRP, and Litecoin. Ethereum, Ripple, XRP, and Litecoin, sometimes known as altcoins, have all soared by more than 30% over the last 30-day period, with the likes of smaller cryptocurrencies, Cardano, NEM, uh, and Stellar making even bigger gains again. That's why if you're looking for the really big gains, but they are more risky, it's in the altcoins. That's where the truly unbelievably, you know, life-changing wealth will be found, but it's a bit of potluck. You have to be able to pick the pick and find the right ones. And a lot of it is luck. Look again, based on 2017, pretty much anything in the top 100, especially the stuff that's entrenched well in the top sort of 50, they are going to moon hard no matter what. If they fall out of the top 50, and particularly out of the top 100, you know, it's dubious about, you know, whether they're going to last and all the rest of it. But the really, really good uh, cryptos, they're going to moon super hard when this gets to its, you know, full parabolic stuff where it's just going crazy. Uh, you know, and the price of, you know, Bitcoin is doubling in 24 hours and things like that. When that's happening, again, not personal, not financial advice, just personal opinion. Please take some profits. When, you know, things are really starting to ramp up, you know, Bitcoin, let's say it's at $120,000 and all of a sudden it's at $150,000 and then $170,000 and this happens all within a matter of a week, that's probably going to be the time to start to take some profits. I know I will have uh, once I start to see things like that. And for me, it's not so much price based, although don't get me wrong, some prices come up, I'm probably going to take some profits, i.e. if something's done a, a, you know, a 10, 20, 30x, I just can't help it, I'm going to have to, but it's more a time thing for me. I know somewhere sort of later next year is likely going to be the top. Exactly where it is, that's hard to say, probably around December, that's where the tops have been other times, but look, the cycle could get shorter this time because, you know, too many people know when the cycle top is going to be so they'll want to uh, front run it and so it, maybe it happens earlier it could be later because you know the retail is going to push the price really high the institutions they're going to have got in nice and early again you know pre 30,000 so they're going to be just gradually selling bits and bits as it goes up they're not going to try and dump everything at the last minute they know that doesn't work that'll just drop the price too fast and your order may not get filled so they will just sell bit by bit you know gradually as it goes up keep that profit and then wait for the bottom of the next bear market and we should be doing the same something similar but I know you know let's say sort of or September through to sort of February uh, 2000, so September 2021 through to February, March 2022, I think the cycle high is going to be somewhere in there. I could be wrong. I know, look, I may be wrong, who knows? But the last Bitcoin cycle was December 2017. The last Bitcoin high cycle was December 2000 uh, and sort of 13, I think chances are it's probably going to be December again. No guarantees. I know BitBoy says he's thinking September 28th and pretty smart dude and he's had some really good predictions. So maybe it's September 28th. All I know is uh, I will have positioned, you know, I'll have taken some profits by then already and then it'll just be sort of the moon bag sort of stuff that again, when I see things start to, you know, double in sort of 24 hours to a week, that is when I'm going to really start to scale not completely scale out, but I will sell everything that I'm happy uh, to sell. And basically, it'll be 50% of nearly everything. I won't sell 50% of my Bitcoin. I'll sell maybe sort of 20 to 30% of my Bitcoin. 
Ethereum, uh, I'm not too sure. It'll really depend on the price of Ethereum. Uh, I could sell 50% of my Ethereum. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and I'll definitely be selling 50% of basically any other altcoin that I have at that stage, you know, depending on sort of how it's done. And again, I'll, it won't be all in one go. Because what happens if it continues to go up another, you know, four or five hundred percent after there? So it'll just be selling, you know, percentages of it. So again, you know, let's say, you know, Bitcoin uh, peaks out at $226,000. When that happens, the altcoins will run for a while after that. So Bitcoin will level off and start to come back. That is always what happens. The altcoins then, all the profit from Bitcoin gets pushed into the altcoins. So the altcoins will likely still run and they will run super hard because their market caps are so much lower than Bitcoin. And again, so they may moon for another week or two, maybe even a month after Bitcoin has reached its peak. So again, you don't want to just dump it all in one go and then be like, oh geez, I could have still 5x on top of that. But again, that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. You need to make your own decisions uh, and you know, do your own research and do what's best for you. But all I can say to you is don't get, don't get caught holding the bags when it all falls down, because it will. That is how all market cycles work. They don't ever change. Again, I'm not telling you to sell everything. If you believe in something and think it's got some long-term, uh, some real long-term value, i.e. maybe Bitcoin, just sell 30% of it, 20%, 50%, whatever it is. Hopefully, at the very least, get back the money that you put in. Maybe some, you know, two, three times your profit uh, and then keep the rest of it again for the next cycle and buy back in cheaper or buy something else. Buy yourself a house, whatever it is you're, you know, looking to put your money into. There's so many opportunities out there. And this cryptocurrency thing, this may be the last cycle where people can really get in and make some really serious sort of coin. We might be lucky and there might be another one. Uh, again, with the bigger caps, you know, kind of Ethereum and things like that, I think the altcoin space is always going to be, uh, you know, options there, but they will become less and less. Uh, and again, they are really, really risky. So for me, I'm really hoping that I make generational sort of life-changing wealth in this cycle. And if there's that opportunity in the next cycle that I can still make some really good money, but I think after that, because that really takes us into another, that's in a decade's time, I think the life-changing generational wealth for Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and maybe even XRP and Litecoin and that, that opportunity will have come and gone. I'm not saying you can't make money on them because they're a fixed supply. I think you know, you'll know you always be able to make money on them in the long run, provided they don't, again, have a bug in the system and fail, which I just, I think that would have happened by now if there was but they won't have that super high volatility and then it'll just be in altcoins and some other venture. And that's just really risky stuff. We don't want to gamble. Uh, and for me personally, I don't think crypto, you know, all of the cryptocurrencies are a gamble at the moment. I think there's some things that uh, are going to be pretty solid uh, and have, a, you know, some long-term uh, prospects in them. But, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Ripple, uh, Litecoin, again, any of those things that have been, you know, regulated, XRP hasn't yet, but I believe it will be. I think they have uh, long-term value and their price appreciation will still go up for probably, yeah, another decade, uh, sort of exponentially, and then it may sort of start to level off. But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, Hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.